Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phone Bunch and today we are reviewing the Zolo Q510S. It comes with the 1.3 GHz quad core processor Android 4.4.2 KitKat right out of the box with 1 GB of RAM and a 4 inch display. On the left of the device you can see the volume rocker which has a metallic finish as does the design trim on the side. At the top 3.5 audio jack, micro USB data syncing and charging port. On the right you have the power lock and unlock button, again metallic finish. At the bottom there is nothing. And you can also see the design language which is carried through the entire device. It's sort of metallic in sheen. But I really dislike these tall bezels at the top and bottom of the display. They make the phone huge. At the back you have the 5 megapixel camera. It's fixed focus, LED flash, solo branding and speakerphone at the bottom. The back is flat, therefore sound does get muffled when the phone is put on its back. Now on opening up the backer you will be able to see that actually it is quite flimsy. It bends very easily and there are just too many locks to get it open. In this respect, this backer is like the Galaxy S Doors 2 from Samsung, but it's a lot flimsier. But it does have a smooth metallic texture which feels good to hold, it doesn't feel cheap. Now on the inside, you have a micro SD card slot which can take up to 32 gigs of storage, a full size SIM card slot and a micro SIM card slot which takes in your 3G SIM card. You have 1500 mAh battery which is actually not that great in terms of battery life. But we'll talk about that later. Now this phone scored decent enough in our benchmarks. It was nothing revolutionary given that it features the MediaTek MT6582M chipset with Mali 400 MP2 GPU. Overall the build of the phone is actually quite solid. It does feel good to hold in the hand as well. Both buttons are ergonomically paced. In the front you have a VGA camera, proximity light sensors, a 4 inch WVGA display and then you have capacitor buttons at the bottom which do light up. But the bezels at the top and bottom are still very huge making this a tall device. The display in itself doesn't have many issues. It has decent viewing angles, not much distortion in brightness or colors. It's quite a bright display with good sunlight viewability. Colors do look vibrant on it. I'll change some wallpaper so that you can see the color reproduction yourself. All colors seem to pop. It's a very sharp display as well given that it's 4 inch in size with a WVG resolution. This is the default KitKat dialer. I'll just show you the calling interface. You do have call recording available here. We didn't have any major issues with network or call quality. The speakerphone as well as the earpiece are loud. Now this is a dual SIM device and you do have contact binding available for both the SIM cards. Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth as well as USB tethering is also available. You do have GPS available on the phone and in high accuracy mode it's able to locate quickly especially when you are outside. Now you do have a 5 megapixel fixed focus rear camera. So I won't be showing you any image samples because they are not good at all. Images are full of noise, almost always out of focus. And the video quality is not good either. Moreover, you have the Redmi 1S as well as Android 1 devices available at the same price point. Now this is the default headset you get within the box. These do look alright and sound decent enough as well. But if you are an efficient outdoor, I would recommend getting your own pair. Now this is the updated Play Music app with material design. You have an equalizer built in which does work. You have several presets available. I prefer to use Rock but you can create your own preset as well. Now you do have FM radio available on the device with RDS so you can see channel information as well as other frequencies and you also have record FM with just a single tap. Now we are playing a 1080p video you can see that the playback is smooth. This phone can also record in 1080p but due to lack of autofocus videos do turn out to be quite blurry. YouTube videos also play smoothly. Coming to software this phone runs an almost stock build of Android 4.4 KitKat. You can see the default launcher, you have all your apps available right here. Not many apps came pre-installed, basic Google apps, the rest have been installed by us. A very stock looking launcher, a very stock Android interface as well. You can see right there it's running Android 4.4.2 KitKat and I don't presume it would be updated any further. Now app and app data are movable to the external storage, you can also install apps directly onto the external SD card. You have about 2 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of phone storage available out of the 8 gig room and you can expand that with a micro SD card. USB OTG is not supported. Now battery life is a bit iffy on this phone. It has good standby time but you won't get more than one day of usage. RAM management is actually not that great either. You have about 250 to 350 MB of RAM available during general use. 
Coming to security, you have face unlock, voice unlock, as well as patent pin and password available. Now you can choose Zolo Secure or Android Device Manager to find, ring, or even erase your device in case it gets lost. We have preloaded phonemerge.com. Our complete website has loaded up, and you can see that the scrolling is a bit slow. Let's test out Pinch to Zoom. Pinch to Zoom is rather quick, but you can see there's a bit of issue with the touch response. We have seen that in gaming as well. Multi-touch doesn't work great on this display. The display does freeze up when you use both fingers. The keyboard here is a default USB keyboard. It's good to type on. In terms of general use, although you don't notice any lag, there was a lot of lag in some of the higher-end games that we tried and the touch response is really not adequate. Sometimes the display just stops responding to touch and does get a little bit heated up as well. Now if we come to gaming, there was a bit of lag as well as frame drop with some of the higher end games but the major issue here is with multi-touch. The display stops responding sometimes and sometimes it just freezes up during gaming. And that happens sometimes during general use as well. So it's not limited to when you are gaming. Overall the display is one of the better things about this phone but still it has huge bezels. The design looks a bit dated, it has issues with multi-touch. Moreover, you have excellent offerings from Micromax Carbon and Spice in the form of their Android One smartphones. Therefore, at this price point, I won't be recommending this phone. You should get Android One smartphones or even the Redmi One S. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share for more such videos. Any questions or any phone you want us to review, just mention that in the comment section. We will definitely reply to that. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more. And as always, have a great day.